Hello and welcome to another video. So today you join me in the car on Dartmoor National Park and normally I would do this bit whilst traveling to the actual location um, but had a little bit of an accident this week. So yesterday I was out filming, did some really good b-roll shots, I, you know I love my b-roll. Um, had a suction cup which I stick to the side of the car and record my b-roll. You can guess what happened next can't you? Um, so Sucked, suction cup stuck to the side of the car, driving down the road at 50 miles an hour. The whole suction cup just falls off. Action four, takes the tumble, smashes up, all the front, the whole front screen smashed and the lens protector. Um, the memory card that was in it was damaged and the door that holds the, um, basically one of the sides of the doors was all crushed up and broken off. So yeah, I really wasn't happy, it's two months old so gutted really gutted about that really gutted um so thankfully though i got it home i took the memory card out put a new memory card in and it actually works the whole back screen is actually perfect condition so it's only the front screen that doesn't work <coughs> excuse me um so i was i was very happy that it still works it doesn't record audio anymore and obviously it's not waterproof but it's still working so really when you uh take into consideration driving down the road at nearly 50 miles an hour um you know, bouncing around, coming off the car. It's done pretty well. A little bit a, a little bit of a uh, testament to why you should have a housing on it, though. Um, I didn't have any housing on mine. Uh, it does come with a little surround that you can put it in. It may, may have saved it a little bit, but probably not. But anyway, I digress. So that's, uh, that's the catch up on the action cam, which I'm recording on you now. I'm recording now, so it does work fine. Um, I, I wouldn't know until I get this home, but I'm hoping it works fine still. So today's video is going to be about a picture. Now I saw a picture in a Dartmoor group that I'm in on Facebook and they didn't know where the picture was taken. They, they think it's Hate or Rock. So I thought it would be a really good idea to come out and recreate that picture. A, I like the picture. I like, I like it, it look, look quite nice. I'm sticking up on the screen so you can see it. And B, I thought it'd be a bit of a challenge for me to try and find the location the photographer took that photo from. And obviously it's gonna be a bit of a challenge because it was taken a long time ago. So whether that heather that's around it that makes that leading line all the way up to the, you know, the path, the S curve in it, all the way up to the rocks, whether that's still there when I get there, when I find it, I don't know. So it might be the case that I'd get a similar image, but not quite that image. But um, yeah, that's all there is to say about that. So only thing I have to say, roll that epic. I can't say it. Roll that epic B-roll. <laughs> So it's just started raining and uh, I've managed to get under this rock to avoid the uh, to the rain and then by the time I set my camera up it stopped raining but I, I thought it'd be a good uh, opportunity to address this week's video uh, which is is it okay to steal someone else's work and me personally I think yes it is and uh, with a caveat to that obviously if you're going out and recreating a piece of work and it's identical then no maybe not that's that's probably a bit too much but if you're taking other photographers work 
and you're going out finding the locations and then taking photos of your own using your own style and your own brand into it then definitely learn from the best i mean at the end of the day why why recreate the wheel when you've got thousands of photographers millions of photographers if you like out there getting really great images and as a starting point learning composition lighting and all those different things if you can take one element of that away is, is actually having the composition there that's one less thing you've got to do in that process you can get a great image and then you can carry on learning from that image so you can learn what made that a great image why you liked it what happened when you got there all those different learning experiences you get by actually going out and taking a photo so i think it takes away some of that um thought process if you like of trying to find a good image you know there's a good image there and you've just got to take it is a really good way of learning uh, or improving your photography so yeah I think absolutely steal other people's images don't steal the exact uh, thing do your put your own spin on it and uh, yeah get out taking photos because uh, that's what I'm going to do I'm going to steal this image now I'm not going to steal it but I'm going to recreate this image I keep saying steal I'm going to recreate this image and I'm going to make it my own if I find the location but it has stopped raining and I'm going to get out from under this rock because I look like an absolute idiot talking to a camera under a, it's literally like a little hole in a rock. So I'm going to get on quick. Right, so we are at Haytor Rock. Haytor Rock is this one. Now, the one in the image, I think, is this one here, which is called a Loman, Hator Loman. So I think, judging by the perspective of Hator, is a lot smaller than that in the actual image. So I think I'm gonna head down this way, which will keep that Loman Tor on the right and Hator on the left, like it is in the image. And I've got a sneaking suspicion this might be the path that's in the image. Now I've just come down the path a little bit. Uh, you can see here, I don't know if that makes sense, but this is the this is the image. I think this is the path. I'm not 100 percent sure it could be there's one that leads up this way. Um, it could be over a bit, but I don't think it is. I think it's just had that much um, wear over the years. Maybe I'll try down. Maybe I'll try down a little bit further and just see whether that produces anything because it still looks quite. Hator still looks quite prominent there. You could have, obviously, if you use the wide-angle lens. Um, it's going to make that look a little bit further away, so that might be um, why it looks so small in the image. And obviously he's got this one in the image as well, so he's got the whole of that rock in the image. And it does tell me a little bit about the position of the tripod, because you can see here, you can't see the bottom of that tour, it slopes off. And there actually looks completely different talking about that's right i'm sure that's right i'm sure it might just be where maybe it's over to the right maybe it's over that way a bit more i'll try over there So it almost disappears off to the left hand side hate or almost becomes a afterthought of the image and i think it might be this way i'm not 100 percent sure because that slope hmm it's a hard one so i'm just gonna have a little wander around see if i can find where that slope is off the, as it comes off the edge of the rock i mean that image isn't taken so long ago that that slope wouldn't be there now there'll be hundreds of years worth of erosion to remove that slope so I'm obviously at the wrong angle 
So I'm just going to come. Yeah, so you can start to see that slope now. I've just lost that path though. So I think it's a lot further over this way than I actually anticipated. So definitely wasn't the right angle. Um, I'll tell you one thing, one, when I get over these rocks, look at these rocks here, come like the worst way ever. But one thing, it's bitter up here and just at the end of October, Halloween tomorrow. And, uh, oh God, uh, the light looks like it could be really nice. It's, we've definitely got some speckled light coming through. Whoa, that's a big hole. We've definitely got some speckled light coming through and uh, the clouds are actually looking quite dramatic. So when I do find the location and I don't break my ankle, it's hopefully gonna make an interesting image. So I'm gonna put the camera down now before I break my ankle and I'm gonna head further over that way uh, just to bring out that, the bit of the slope in that tour. So I'll speak to you in a second. think this is the right angle so let me just show you on the back of the camera so if you look here and then look up here I think that's pretty much it the only thing we don't have is the path that goes up in the image so I think it's possible that I've got a head further down that way so that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna head further away from it keeping the same angle So, get me thrown out. So originally, I thought it'd be further away, but now I'm looking at this. So you can see there's no separation there between these two tours. And in this image, you've got a little bit of a dip that goes down. But also, I've just noticed it. Didn't really notice because the uh, light was shining on this side of the image, but that's almost like a bank that goes up there. And I've just looked over here, and you can see there's a bank that goes up here. So I think, I think that could be the way to go. So that's where we're headed. And that dude just thought I was waving at him, uh, but I wasn't. So. That'll be interesting. Let's head over to that bank and see what it looks like. Right, so we've come down a little bit further and could be, could be it. Not 100% sure. I still think that rock um, hay tour here is just a little bit too big still, but there's got a path going up which could have eroded over time. I'm going to head down a little bit further because I think if I go down any further, I'm going to lose a lot of those rocks. So the last bit I'm going to go down to is just down the bottom here. Um, so this again, he could have been, so it's all perspective. I say he is probably um, not. Okay, so again, so they could have been here, hiding, not hiding, <laughs> not hiding, but behind this bush, because um, you can see that bush coming out in the image and that creates a path, but not sure. One last one, I'm gonna try this one here. I think this, there's a, more of a path here, but Again, I don't know if this is the type of path that's in that image. The path in the image looks a lot wider to start with, but it's not too bad. So. Okay, 
okay, yeah. So, depending on where you come out, that might, it might have gotten, the bush might have gotten a little bit more overgrown, cutting off some of that path. So, we'll just have a quick look at that image. So, you can see that this is possibly the most likely subject. So, you've got, it's a bit hard to do this with one hand, so you've got this bank here that comes out, which is just up. Uh, just up here across cuts across and then you've got the path that goes up through so yeah so I think obviously the, the right vegetation is taken at a certain time of year I think we found our image I'm going to set this up I think this is the one so bear with me while I set this up and uh, capture some of this beautiful sunlight while we've still got it absolutely amazing so give me a sec So I've brought a few different focal lengths with me, from 17 all the way up to 400 today, only because I wasn't sure where this image was going to be taken from. So I thought if I cover all my bases, I've got all my lenses on me. And I'm going to move up and down now this little area just to see where this image was composed from. Now I say image, it could be a painting for all I know. I'm not 100% sure. It does look like a photo, so I'm going to say photo. Um, I will notice one thing, there's a tree. It's quite a new growth tree that's not in the... Uh, well, it wouldn't be in a photo if it was a few years old now anyway. Um, so yeah, so that's, that, that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to quickly go up and down, see if I can find that composition, then I'll set up for my final shot. Right, so where I'm struggling, let me just show you quickly. Um, we've got different types. Obviously the vegetation has changed over the time and this is where I think the image would have been taken, the photographer would have been roughly here and this bush here would have been the one in the top left but it was obviously a lot more grown and possibly trimmed. This is the path that leads up and then the tours are in the top as you can see. So that's the composition. Now. Obviously we've got the overgrowth, so it's a bit hard to keep that leading line, but that's the image I'll take and I will pop it up on the screen and show you the exact image comparison side by side. Let me know whether you think I was right or not. So I'm just going to take that image quickly just to give you an idea. So I'm at... All over there. So I'm at a focal length of about, where are we? Just get this picture quickly. Okay, so we're at 160 for a second, f4.5, a focal length of about 35 mil. So that image, that is the one I think is in that picture. Let me know what you think in the comments. Does it look the same? What I'm going to do now, I'm going to take my, well, I might take a better image of that. That's just a quick, quick snap, put a filter on, wait for some light. Um, and then I might take an image of my own and just see what I can get myself. So this is my final image. I unfortunately lost the footage of me actually getting this image. So I do put a polarizer on to bring out the blues in the sky. It's shot at 125th of a second at f11 ISO 100 32 millimeters on the 24 to 105 lens. And all I've done is I've come up higher up the bank a little bit uh, just to make that path and give it that little bit of separation on the path from the overgrown bushes and then in post-production all I've done is I've just darkened down the outside of the paths on the opposite sides and then just enhanced that path a little bit and the rocks I've given them a bit more texture and clarity that's it that's my final image Neil how's it going mate what are you up to yeah mate how you doing yeah I'm good I've gone down the woods today filming next week's video do you fancy a little challenge 
Yeah, go on then, what are you thinking? Great, do you have your 400 with you by chance? I do actually, yeah. Excellent, how does this sound? The both of us shooting 400 millimeters in the woods, three images, and we let the viewers decide the winner. <sighs> Why the woods, man? 400 mils in the woods, that's gonna be... Yeah, go on, yeah, all right, I'll give it a go. I need some more practice in the woods anyway. Great, well I'm already down the woods at the moment, so I'm going to get started and I'll speak to you soon. Good luck. Okay mate, good luck, speak soon. Okay, so that was Neil Stevens, so a great photographer and a fellow YouTuber. So if you don't know who Neil is, go and check out his channel. He does some really great content. He's up in Kent, a little bit away from me. Um, so he's just challenged me to a 400 mil challenge of shooting only 400 mil in the woods, free photos, and you guys get to pick the winner. Now, yeah, that's that's going to be a challenge. So check out his video to find out he, he, how he gets on and then come back here and check out my channel next week to find out how I get on. And I'll catch you on the next one.